practices uh, to different audiences, we realize that uh, you need to know what to do, but you also need to have assets to do it. <laughs> so we realize that uh, across the region, uh, we are not uh, getting our share of what is available worldwide in terms of climate finance and how to access it and uh, how to go through the complex procedures of application for funding in, uh, through the climate finance uh, sources. So for that reason, we initiated uh, a platform uh, to help uh, countries, organizations, uh, and uh, institutions to access climate finance and to understand the steps to take to be eligible first and to present bankable projects for adaptation in the water sector. So this has been launched at the COP uh, in Marrakesh in Morocco last November. <laughs> and uh, we have been uh, sharing the information with uh, potential users of this, uh, the services the, the help desk is providing. Uh, and uh, we already have some experience ongoing uh, that this kind of, of information uh, to the direct users of, of this information yeah, is growing and uh, is growing steadily. Uh, so we continue to share the information and that's going to be uh, uh, a hopefully a sustainable structure that we initiated and we helped for the last months and we will continue doing so until the end of the program. Uh, but the, the, the organization that is leading this exercise uh, uh, is committed to continue and sustain the service uh, as part of its activities. So the three objectives set for this platform is to provide information and also to train and capacitate individuals and organizations on how to mobilize resources from climate finance uh, uh, funds uh, and help in developing bankable uh, proposals. So based on, on this brief presentation, I mean we have looked into what can be done, and we realize that there are things that can be done uh, in the adaptation in the water sector. Uh, a common uh, thread is uh, when a project is over, uh, the story is over. Uh, nothing is done to take further and scale up even mm, projects that have successful results, uh, which lead to the conclusion that uh, for scaling up, it's the responsibility of the government, but it's also the responsibility of uh, civil society organizations and the communities themselves to take initiative to scale up what is successful. And it's uh, local in nature. I mean, the projects have been successful uh, uh, as far as the communities are involved in the implementation, which uh, lead us to the, uh, uh, the conclusion that the adaptation is, is local in nature. And it's successful if it is taken into consideration that the involvement of local communities should be as uh, uh, open as possible. Uh, but I also ra raise the awareness at the decision-making level. Uh, uh, we're challenged in several occasions that uh, with the, the amount of uncertainty we are facing with the climate change, it's difficult to justify investing in, in action uh, with, with that much uh, uncertainty. Uh, but uh, that reflects that there is limited awareness on the cost of no action. Uh, which is not yet, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, known to all decision makers. Uh, so also, we think of uh, uh, the chance for the region to, 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 to position itself for a better access to climate uh, finance that are existing. And we were glad to see that the first uh, 
green fund projects are coming to the region for the first time. Uh, a couple of them have been landed in the region with one in Morocco with uh, uh, quite a significant uh, uh, support uh, amounting to more than 40 million dollar for Argan Forest development. So that's my story and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Hamel. I'd like to open the floor for any comments or clarifications. Please, introduce yourself. Oh, microphone, please. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ben Sonnenfeld. Uh, I'm a colleague of LIA, uh, also working for the Amsterdam Center for World Food Studies. First of all, thank you very much thank you. for your excellent presentation and very informative session. Uh, I was wondering I think now it works, yes? Okay. Um, my, my question is about the scaling up of your successful initiatives. What kind of factors did you take into consideration to transfer successful methodologies to another region or to another uh, country? Uh, were that only by physical factors? Were that also institutional settings? Uh, can you just elaborate on that? Thank you very much. Actually, for uh, for each project, it's it's a different context. I think for uh, uh, let's say in, in in when it comes to uh, new irrigation methods leading to physical saving of water, uh, the the learning and the, the 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 exchange that is already happening without us uh, has brought some exchange at the level of different communities. Uh, but in terms of, of, of policy, uh, I mean, we are not witnessing that successes are taken up by other countries and even at a higher scale in the same country. And that's what we can see there is, 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 is a problem in, in, in the region. Uh, projects are happening. Uh, once they are over, uh, there, is, there is very limited take take up of, of those projects, unless, unless, and we, ha we do have some recent projects where the private sector is involved from the beginning, when the solutions have uh, a, a market, uh, simple cooling systems for milk uh, it happening in Tunisia is taking off, uh, solar drying of uh, cherry tomato in upper Egypt is flying with itself because the connection to the market is the driver of the scaling up and the replication, but not the policy itself. And uh, I think my colleagues here in the region can share their experience on something that has really worked, but just is not scaled up. Uh, and no, no, no real commitment or engagement from the policymakers to make it expand and grow uh, and used uh, at a larger scale. So it's a challenge, actually. It's not. Yeah. Uh, my, my question actually is: Can you, can you explain why so it is? <laughs> yeah, my, my my question actually comes down to: Can you explain why it is not <laughs> adopted by? Well, I will throw this question to the audience. Actually, in the region, why it's difficult to see things uh, scaled up. Uh, 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 first of all, uh, the the. And uh, even even the national innovations happening by the universities and the research centers are not channelized in a systematic way to 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 make them policies. I mean, the research is in, in 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 going in one direction, and the policy uh, is made in a parallel track with very limited pathways between the two. Uh, that's one 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 issue. Uh, the accountability of the poli public policy also is not there. I mean. Uh, uh, if if the public policy is not leading to results, no, no, nobody is blamed for that. Uh, the research accountability, uh, uh, research is still coming up with solutions that are published, and that's it. And so uh, implication on developments uh, are not uh, institutionalized, so that uh, policy is accountable and research is accountable, and that way we will have some forms of 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 scaling up that is institutions and not left to uh, uh, initiatives of individuals and even sometimes to NGOs 
and Jews are doing sometimes better than the government in scaling up and replicating exercises, including sanitation, for instance, where uh, the role of, uh, and I think we will have a discussion in a couple of days on the progress on sanitation where the role of the civil society has been uh, 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 as important as the role of government. So it's an institutional problem, it's a policy problem, and I don't want to call it a political problem. Uh, it's, it's just someone who is supposed to take up success stories that have been proven to be successful in the, in the local and national institutional environment and make them bigger. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, probably uh, PPPs in water uh, are not only about utilities, it could be about income generating and employment, but it needs uh, private sector to be in the driver's seat rather than relying on the public sector alone. Thank you, Hamoha. If there's a short question, if not, we'll, oh, yes, madam. Can I have the microphone, please, up front? If you could introduce yourself, please. Thank you very much for your valuable uh, lecture. Uh, my name is Randa Tufaha from Water Authority of Jordan. My question is regarding the community. How was the response of community to apply recommended practices for climate uh, adaptation? And uh, did you apply any awareness campaign in this regard? Thank you. Yeah, <coughs> well, as I mentioned in, uh, in, in the presentation, in uh, nine out of the 15 projects are community-based projects. <laughs> and that's why they are successful. Uh, 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 community uh, uh, demand-driven, uh, that's why the, it responds to direct needs of the communities, that's why it was it was uh, adopted. Uh, also, uh, needs in terms of, of intervention. I mean, there are, uh, there are places where forestry as an adaptation and mitigation was, was the demand of the communities. So selecting even the topic that could be an adaptation measure has been based on a stakeholders consultation. Uh, that's the first step. The second step is uh, the, the sustainability of the intervention. That was a criteria we 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 uh, used to to select the communities and the topics that we will work on. The third element is the uh, the short-term change that we hope to see in uh, measuring the impact of the projects uh, was another uh, criteria. But in terms of what we do, that's that's of course uh, efficiency in water use. Uh, water saving measures, uh, uh, awareness rising on, on, on practices and on attitude uh, towards water. And in some cases, we looked at the capacity development. Uh, in the case of, of Morocco, where we, we initiated in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment, uh, the first uh, competence center in climate change uh, that is looking both at mitigation and adaptation. So th those, those are kind of uh, uh, mix of criteria we use. And in those cases, I mean, we selected uh, 15, but actually there are more. Uh, and uh, we focused on the ones that look uh, into or that work on water uh, as, a, uh, as an, uh, uh, an entry point for adaptation to climate change in different sectors. Thank you very much, Hamel. <laughs> So we're turning now back to the national level, and um, I'm very pleased to invite uh, Madame Indira Dahabi, <laughs> please, to come. Um, uh, Madame Indira has a master's degree in water resources and environmental management. Um, she has a uh, long experience working with the Ministry of Environment, but she's coming here in a personal capacity here. But that said, I would like to say that uh, we have had a pleasure at ESQA working with uh, Indira on climate change negotiations and work on uh, Vercar as well. <laughs> I know that you were there with some of the assessment work we've done at the regional level. And uh, I think she's going to share with us today, um, highlight some of her experience regarding climate change impacts in the water sector as they relate to Jordan um, specifically. So please. Thank you. Thank you.
مش مش ماشي اوكي يا ام وات اي سيد ذات سينس اتس عرب ووتر ويك اي وود لايك تو سبيك ان عربيك سو ماي ماي برزنتيشن راح تكون على uh, تاثيرات التغير المناخي في ال, uh, في الاردن اوكي طبعا بالنسبه للانتر جفرمنتال بانل ريبورت الو Is it okay? Can you hear? I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. One second, please. No problem. Can the interpreters just stay test, see if we can hear them? Hello. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. Yes, there we are. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, طبعاً بالنسبة للهيئة الحكومية المعنية بتغير المناخي uh, بتقريرها اللي بسنة 2007 uh, فالتقرير بنص على إنه تغيرات التغ... ال, أو التأثيرات التأثيرات المناخية uh, راح تأثر على كل منطقة ب, uh, بدرجة بتختلف عن المنطقة الثانية. وعبر الوقت وبالتالي كل مجتمع راح يكون له قدره مختلفه على التكيف مع التغير المناخي او التخفيف منه طبعا بالنسبه للاردن الاردن فيري فولنرابل تو كلايمت تشينج امباكت وبناء على هاي الحساسيه او هاي الهشاشه للتغيرات المناخيه بالنسبه للاردن اوكي okay. شهدت المنطقة يعني أثار سلبية يعني كتير مهمة بالنسبة للتغيرات المناخية وهذا اللي خلاها تصير من المناطق اللي أقل ندرة بالمياه بالعالم كلها على يعني على مستوى الدرجة الثانية. بالإضافة إنه الووتر سكورسيتي بالأردن هي واحدة من ال خلينا نقول الباريرز آه اللي بتواجه الـ Sustainable Development آه in Jordan وهذا الوضع رح يتفاقم أيضا بمساعدة التغيرات المناخية أنا رح أحكي اليوم عن التغيرات المناخية أو تأثيرها على الووتر سيكتور بالأردن ورح يكون على أربعة بيلرز ورح أحكي عن التأثير التغيرات المناخية اللي جاء بالثيرد ناشونال كوميونيكيشن البلاغات الوطنية الثالث رح أحكي عنهم بالإنتندد ناشونال ديترمنت كونتريبيوشنز اللي هي المساهمات الوطنية المقدمة لسكرتارية التغير المناخي البوليسي اللي عملتها وزارة المياه والري احنا بنسميها Resilient Water Sector Policy for Resilient Water Sector او المنعة يعني National Adaptation Plan اللي هي الخطة الوطنية للتكيف هلا بالنسبة لتأثيرات التغير المناخي based on third national communication أول شيء تقرير البلاغات الوطنية الثالث انعمل بسنة 2014 وكان من أوائل التقارير اللي انعمل فيها داون سكيلينج أو دايناميك داون سكيلينج وكان فيها تنبؤات للتغيرات المناخية ل 100 سنة فإذا بتطلعوا على التقرير رح يكون في لسنة 2100 projections لل climate change impact وهاي ال projections هي moderate to high confidence يعني موثوقة جدا وطبعا تم اختيار 34 43 grid وكل grid كانت تقريبا 50 كيلو متر 
الفكرة كانت إنه بالنهاية الأردن تحصل على our own يعني climate model يكون عنا إحنا مدلنا الخاص. طبعا احنا ما عملنا فروم سكراش لا احنا كجوردن عملنا بيز اون كوردكس دومين افريكا كوردس كوردكس دومين و طبعا كان في عندنا 9 جي سي امز اللي هي جلوبال سيركوليشن مودلز وكان في 2 ار سي امز و2 ار سي بيز واكثر شيء بعد شوي رح نشوف اعتمدنا اللي هي أربعة ونص وثمانية ونص فاحنا صار في عنا قسمناهم على ثلاث خلينا نقول هورايزونز او ثلاث ثلاث فئات زمنية من سنة 2020 لسنة 2050 ومن سنة 2050 سوري هنا في غلط اللي هو